Okay, so right now we're in the business of finding absolute max and absolute min. And what we've discovered from last time is that, well, let's see what, what you know about this. Is this going to have an absolute max and min for sure? Why would you say that? If, if, it's, conti if it's continuous, that's closed. So the absolute max or min, if this is continuous on the interval, will either be between, uh, will be between that open interval or at an endpoint. So those closed endpoints dictate if that's a continuous function that we will have an absolute max and min. If I have them open, do we necessarily have to have an absolute max and min? No, not necessarily. It could go way higher than a relative max, relative min. So, and, and never actually get to that point. What's our idea of how to find an absolute max or min? What do we do first? That's like if you don't know, just say derivative and 90% of the time you're right. Because in calculus, the answer is derivative. In calculus 2, the answer is integral. So if you're falling asleep, you're like, Mr. Leonard says, what's this? You go, derivative. 90% of the time you're going to be right, okay? <laughs> in math 4b, it's uh, integral. Yeah, you're right. That, that's, that's not most of the class. So yeah, it's a derivative, but why? Oh, good. <laughs> ah, very good. Okay, so what we're doing here is realizing that absolute maximums have to occur at either a relative max or relative min or at an endpoint. To find relative max or relative min, that's kind of hard to do right there. Uh, to find that, you find where the slope is zero. Change from increase and decrease, and that would give you those peaks and valleys. We evaluate all of the critical numbers and the endpoints, and that will tell us the highest and lowest. Find me the first derivative, please. Okay, first derivative, if you do this, First derivative says you take down the four thirds, you're going to get 24 over 3, or you simplify as you go. Either way, you get 8. x to the. Good. Minus. Perfect. Very good. How many people were able to find that? Good for you. All right. Now, what do we do with that? Good, because that is my slope. I want to find out where I have a horizontal tangent. That's the potential places where I could be switching from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. Potential places. We'll check that. So here we're going to go ahead, set this equal to zero. And solve for x. How? No, not that one. Nope. Factor, yes, factor. But which one? The smaller one. The smaller exponent is what you factor. Okay, you wouldn't try to factor out x to the fifth out of that, would you? Try to factor out x to the factor the smaller one, and a lot of times it's going to help you. So if I factor out x to the negative two thirds, remember that factoring means divide, right? Factoring means divide. Distribution means multiply. So factoring means divide. We're taking our first term. divided by the term we are factoring out. What happens when you have common bases being divided? You are subtracting exponents. So do this math in your head. One third minus negative two thirds. You're actually adding two thirds there. You're going to get x to the first power. Do you see what I'm talking about? You're going to get x to the first. So this right here gives you eight x. The reason is because you have one third minus negative two thirds. That's 3 over 3. That's going to be 8x. <coughs> Minus, well, this one's easy. x to negative 2 thirds, we pull the whole thing out, we get 1. Is that a lot easier to solve? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, this is, this, you'd be stuck on that if you couldn't factor. I mean, you'd be stuck. But here we now know that we have two factors being multiplied together that gives us 0. The zero product property says that either this one, is zero, or this one, don't forget about that one by the way, or this one is zero. That means x equals zero, or x equals one-eighth. 
What are those numbers called that we just found? What are those? Critical points or critical numbers. I think your book might use critical numbers. Critical points or critical numbers. That's what those state. Those are where you have the potential of having a, a horizontal slope. Or, uh, I'm sorry, you do have a horizontal slope. Potential of having a relative max or relative min. Are you okay on finding that? The basic algebra, if you need help on that, you come and see me. I'll show you how to factor out negative exponents. That should be in, from your Math C classes or your intermediate algebra classes. Uh, now, what do we do after that? These two, and what else? Endpoints. So do that. So here's our x values we're plugging in. We're doing negative 1 because that's an endpoint. We're going to do 0 because that was a critical number. We're going to do 1, 8 because, hey, that was a critical number. And we're going to do 1 because that's another endpoint. Whichever one of these values is biggest, that's your absolute max. Whatever one of these values is smallest, that's your absolute min. And these are the places where they occur. I think I made that point last time. Go ahead and plug those in for me and find out what you get. Oh, how nice was, was I that I gave you one eight, huh? Of course, that was so nice. Cube roots. Oh, you love me now, don't you? No, admit it that far? Okay, you will love me. Get down to here a little bit. Let's see, negative one. Would you get nine? <clears throat> Tell you what, I'll, I'll do this one for you guys, just because I'm a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, three. Sixteen. What's sixteen times six? Ninety. So ninety. Did I do that wrong? Ninety-six. Wait, for the whole thing? Oh no. No, you have to sub subtract six, I believe. Someone tell me what that is. You should be looking at me blankly right now. You should have a calculator and you should be working on it. Don't look at me blankly. Come on, if I can do that in your head, you have all calculators, you should be able to work that out. Oh, you know, I did, I did it wrong. It's, it's, uh, I was wrong on that. I did with eight and not one. Six, sixteen. Okay, so somehow you've got to be able to get those things. Which is the largest number that we attain? That is your absolute max. The absolute max is not negative 1, okay? That's just a place where you, on the x-axis where you get it. So this is your absolute max. It occurs at x equals negative 1. What's your minimum? That's the one, yeah. Absolute min and it occurs at x equals 1 8. So let's do a couple more questions here, okay? Let's say that I did uh, this. Do I still have an absolute max? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that endpoint, right? I didn't get rid of that endpoint. Do I have an absolute min? Yes. Min. Is that an endpoint? Then I still have it. That's fine. Absolute max? 
No. No. no, that's off the table right now. So the negative one's gone. Okay, no absolute max. Uh, absolute min. Yes, that's still there. Okay, so are you starting to see how the endpoints play a, a factor in, in what you're doing here? Now let's try one more. I want to find the absolute max and min on that that function. My question is, can I check this? Can I check it on that close interval, zero to one? Why or why not? So if I plug in zero, I would get a zero, right, on the denominator. That's not a good thing. If I plug in one, I'll also get a zero on the denominator. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So on this interval, I, I, I'm not going to have any endpoints because those are asymptotes <coughs> at, that, at that spot. So I'm not going to have any. So I can't check this. Can I check this? No. No, I can only check the open interval. So, okay, okay, well, how do we do that? Well, when you're doing something like this, it's not like you can plug in 1 and 0, right? Like the polynomials. You could just plug those in and see if they're getting bigger or getting smaller. You can't do that here. So what we're going to have to do is find first the critical numbers. That's what we do all the time. You, you with me? You find critical numbers. You set it equal to 0. You set their derivative equal to 0. That's fine. But then we're going to have to take some one-sided limits. We're going to have to find the limit of this thing as we're going towards 0 from the right, and the limit of this thing as we're going to, towards 1 from the left. That's going to give us where our function's tending. Now, let's stop for a second. Just think critically about this. You know that there's going to be an asymptote here and here, right? Mm -hmm. So this function is either going to be going way up high or way down low, and then way up high or way down low. So somewhere we're not going to have an absolute max or min or both, we don't know. We just need the limit to tell us where it's going. It could be going like this, right? In that case, we'll have an absolute min, but not an absolute max. It could be going like this. In that case, we'll have an absolute max, but not min. It could be going like this, or like this, in which case we're going to have nothing. You follow? So we're going to do that. Now, let's go ahead and let's do that before we do the derivative, because if it's like this, we're done. That would be kind of nice, right? Can we do the limits first? So limit. As x approaches 0, x approaches 1, um, 0, are we going to be going from the left or from the right to get to 0? From the left. From the right. 0, 1? You're off. To get to 1, you're coming from the... Yeah. Now, let's do the limit. Is there anything to factor? Well, yes, yes, there is. You can factor on x. Is there anything to simplify that x? So what you need here is a sign analysis. Remember the sign analysis that we talked about? So if you're talking about sign analysis... From 0 to 1, oh, you know what? We might need a derivative, actually. This is going to give us a separating point there. Um, you can plug in a number really close to 0 and see what it's doing, a really, number really close to 1. But I do want you to check this out. Let's find the derivative and find our critical numbers and see how it plays a part here as well. It might, oh, it might not play a part. 